The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention has reported that by age 50, Americans have lost an average of 12 teeth, and among adults 65 to 74 years old, 26% are totally edentulous. Dental implants have become a preferred method for tooth replacement in many situations that were formerly the province of traditional prosthodontics. What we know now is that providing dental implants for people who have lost their teeth provides a high degree of success of the fixtures, maintains the patient's bone level, and increases function and aesthetics. Care of the general dental patient has changed by the emergence of implant-supported restorations, which are a viable alternative to traditional denture fabrication. However, there are still many general practitioners that have not committed to making dental implant treatment a significant part of their practices. They may let potential drawbacks such as surgical or prosthetic training, perceived costs, concern about profitability of the implant cases, or lack of insurance coverage to stand in the way of providing the most innovative and successful phases of dentistry to their patients. Implant manufacturers are presenting product innovations that have made implant dentistry simpler for dentists restoring implants and easier for patients receiving implant therapy. It is imperative that we educate and instruct our patients on the benefits of quality care irrespective of insurance benefits or financial limitations. Patients should be made aware of all the options of their dental care. Many people are unaware of the relationship between teeth and the bone that supports them. Loss of teeth impact facial appearance. Teeth and the maxillary and mandibular bone provide the support for facial contours. Changes in these structures will change facial features. Wrinkles around the mouth and lips, caving in of the face, and collapsing of facial structures results from missing teeth. When teeth are lost, the bone which supported these teeth will resorb over time. Dental implants can preserve the integrity of facial structures by minimizing bone resorption. The implants, in a way, act like natural teeth in that they provide stress to the bone which helps maintain the existing bone contours. Dental implants are thus used to create a more stable foundation for replacement teeth, be they removable or fixed appliances. Maintaining the natural appearance of the face and smile can be challenging, but dental implants have proven to be an excellent starting point compared to conventional complete dentures. Conventional dentures certainly serve their purpose in replacing teeth and facial structural support. However, as the facial structures continue to collapse over time, the denture often needs to be relined to compensate for the added bone loss. Conventional dentures may also accelerate the bone resorption process by pressing down on the gingiva and underlying bone as you function. This article intends to demonstrate just a few of the prosthetic options available today in restoring form and function using dental implant retained over dentures. Our hope with these designs is to dramatically enhance the quality of life of our patients, preserve the integrity of facial structures, not only immediately, but over time, restoring the mouth areas to as close as natural as possible, increasing stability and a sense of security that the teeth will not fall out when eating, laughing, sneezing, and kissing, improve health due to improved digestion and proper nutrition, is also an important part of what we're trying to accomplish. We will improve appearance, improve the taste of food, and eliminate the need for denture adhesive, certainly improving self-confidence and self-esteem in our patients. Fabrication of any stable maxillary removable appliance begins with careful diagnosis and case planning. Regardless of the patient's age, it is imperative that his or her concerns and desires be taken into account in order to make the final prosthesis acceptable. Improving form and function can be a difficult challenge in any complete denture situation. And fortunately, implants have provided an outstanding treatment option for dramatic improvement in denture stability and increased chewing ability. Here in our first case demonstrated today, 
This patient has worn a conventional maxillary complete denture for well over 20 years. Opposing the conventional maxillary denture was an implant retained mandibular overdenture placed many, many years ago. She appreciated the stability and function of the mandibular overdenture and often requested investigation of a similar type of prosthesis in the maxilla. This desire was increased as her maxillary denture needed to be relined several times over the years. The patient really had no significant medical concerns other than severe horizontal bone loss in the premaxillary area. Ridge augmentation procedures were discussed many times over the years, but the invasive procedure was simply declined by the patient. Form and function of her existing conventional denture simply diminished over the years. Options were discussed with the patient, including fabrication of a, simply a new conventional denture, ridge augmentation procedures, followed by dental implant therapy. The patient elected a simple approach in the surgical placement of four dental implants in the posterior maxilla. The surgical design was determined by CT diagnosis and virtual placement using a CT surgical stent. The implant planning software was used to visualize the patient's entire mouth anatomy in three dimensions. The software accurately simulated the placement of dental implants prior to ever touching the patient. We did find adequate bone in the posterior maxilla, but not acceptable bone in the anterior maxilla. This implant planning and placement software provided us a high level of comfort and safety for the patient by reducing surgical and restorative time and by using an accurate 3D plan prior to implant placement. Figure one illustrates the closed vertical dimension of occlusion on this patient. Figure two illustrates the post-operative CT scan illustrating proper position of the four dental implants. Conventional dental techniques are used to visualize tooth position using stable record bases and occlusal rims. Figure three shows these occlusal rims with an intent to increase the vertical dimension to give the patient a younger look. Anterior teeth were set to the desired aesthetics and then following integration of the implants, accurate impressions of the fixtures were taken intraorally using traditional impression coping splinted together with acrylic. The intent of this process is to maximize the stability of the impression technique to make sure that there's no distortion in our final impression. The stable record base with anterior teeth waxed into position was hollowed out and an impression made with polysiloxane materials. You can see accuracy of the final impression. The laboratory then created an extremely accurate master cast with tissue approximations. In this particular case, because of the interclusal space that we had to work with, we decided to use locator attachments as the retentive device for a maxillary horseshoe-shaped overdenture. But because of the posterior position of the implants and the relatively porous quality of the bone in the area, I did consider placing right and left splinted bars with attachments to retain the overdenture. However, again, the uh, vertical dimension was such that we could not establish proper aesthetics using bars. The use of locator attachments eliminated my concern with interocclusal distance and final aesthetics. The locators are in nice position to, to retain a maxillary implant retained overdenture. The locators come in a variety of retentions from extra light to heavy, and figure nine illustrates the underside of the final palateless maxillary implant retained overdenture using the locator attachments. Figure 10 shows how the palate is exposed, allowing for better taste of food, elimination of the gagging re reflex, yet outstanding stability and retention. We decided to make a, uh, a casting, a metal casting for this appliance to thin out the palate area as much as possible and also to give us increased strength uh, so that the appliance would not crack or break over a period of time. The patient exhibited a positive end result because of her understanding of the limiting factors involved in this case and her desire to limit more aggressive invasive surgical procedures. However, she was aware that bone loss was continuing in her maxilla 
and our attempt to minimize future bone loss was very much appreciated. Chewing was more efficient and speaking was excellent. The patient no longer worried about her prosthesis slipping or loosening during function. And I think you can definitely see a younger, more vibrant smile. Our second case demonstrated here was a woman who has also had conventional maxillary and mandibular complete dentures for many years. Because of the lack of horizontal bone height, conventional dental implant placement would be difficult. However, the patient's quality of life was diminished because her conventional mandibular denture was not stable and began creating functional problems. Small diameter implants were chosen to restore stability in a mandibular overdenture due to their size. Four small diameter implants were surgically placed in the symphysis without complication. So figure 12 illustrates the preoperative small mandibular ridge, which is causing a decrease in the quality of life for our patient. Figure 13 shows the parallel position of the four small diameter implants, which were used to stabilize the new mandibular implant retained overdenture. Polysiloxane impression material was injected around the pickup copings. Laboratory analogs were placed into the copings after removal from the, uh, from the mouth, and this would be used to create a master cast. Figures 17 and 18 demonstrate simple O-ring attachments in housings that were used as the retentive device. Figure 19 shows her new dentures in position creating a new conventional maxillary complete denture along with her very stable small diameter implant retained over denture improved her vertical dimension of occlusion and created outstanding final aesthetics. Placing conventionally sized implants in the mandible would have been difficult. Uh, small diameter implants gave me the option to restore function and stability of her prosthesis with very little surgical risk. This is a tremendous service to uh, a group of patients that may not otherwise experience the benefits of implant dentistry. Figure 20 illustrates our third patient here where we had a patient who was totally edentulous in the maxilla and mandible and has never worn any type of prosthesis. You can see the significant amount of wrinkles and loss of lip support in this relatively young uh, individual. She was in her 40s but she felt and looked much older than she was. Conventional dental implant surgical procedures were completed with four dental implants in the edentulous mandible and five maxillary implants were surgically placed in the patient's maxilla. A typical flap procedure was used uh, in the maxilla, but a flapless procedure was used in the mandible. Following integration of the mandibular dental implants, Conventional impressions is made by, use, by placing impression copings into the properly placed and parallel implants using a custom tray, which is very accurate with nice borders. Due to the ideal positioning of the four mandibular implants, locator attachments were used as the retentive device for the overdenture. Because of their design, the patient is able to easily align and seat the overdenture into position. The attachments come in a variety of retentions, as is demonstrated in figure 24. Figure 26 illustrates the bar in position. The most critical part of this case is that we were able to predictably provide the patient dramatic aesthetic improvement function and support for her facial soft tissue. And figure 27 illustrates a beaming smile and a very, very happy patient.